brothers rock Jesus pieces, but they really don't know Jesus. Just know that he's the seat and please don't leave it. We got the keys to the kingdom. We'll never be defeated. Evil legions, all the demons. I know you see them screaming, please believe it. We got the keys to the kingdom. We got the keys for the kingdom. We got the keys to the but they really don't know Jesus. The keys to the kingdom, we'll never be defeated. Evil legions, all of these demons. I know you see them screaming, please believe it. We got the keys to the kingdom, we got the keys to the keys to the. We just had. Watch this. Give me Job 1. So remember, like we was telling you, right? Knowing that you're an Israelite, it has requirements, right? And coming, I want you to come out of that Catholic, what you say you was? Catholicism? Catholic Christian, right? Denounce that, right? Because what we've been going over is that being from the tribe of Zebulon is far more important than being a Catholic Christian, right? Watch this. Read that Job 1 and 4. It's the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 4. For the past about 20 minutes we were dealing with you, right? What were we showing you? That the churches have lied to our people far too long, right? We have went over Christmas so far. We've shown who the, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven is for so far. Your churches have never told you that. Our churches have never told us who the kingdom of heaven was for. That's right. But guess what? That's why we come out here every Sabbath. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 4. Bring it out. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day. So, like the conversation we was having, right? What would be, what would be considered today as his day? If you're celebrating your day, it's your what? Okay, it's your birthday, right? So let's see if God sanctioned birthdays. Because we never read. We out here about to celebrate Christmas. We about to be giving gifts to one another. We about to be putting gifts underneath the tree, bowing your head to that idol. But let's see if Christ ever celebrated his birthday. Let's see if God tells us to celebrate our birthday. Watch this. Everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Don't that sound like a celebration? You feasting on your day, you getting your family to come to celebrate. That sounds like you celebrating your birthday, right? Let's see, read. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about. When the days of their what? Feasting were gone about. So after they were done feasting, right, read. That Job sent and sanctified them. What does it mean to sanctify somebody? Do you know? So to sanctify somebody means you have to cleanse it, right? So mind you, Job was seen as perfect in the eyes of the Lord, right? He just got wind that his children were celebrating their birthdays at their houses, having a whole feast, having a whole gathering, right? When Job found out he had to do what? And Job sent and sanctified them. He had to go cleanse them, read. And rose up early in the morning read. and offered burnt offerings. Are you familiar with the laws of sacrifice? Not really? What did we have to do under Moses in order to get forgiveness of sins? We had to repent, but what else did we have to do? We had to do what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Give me an animal, anything. Yeah. The, the lamb. We had to sacrifice lamb, sheep, doves, right, turtle doves. So under Moses, we had to sacrifice things in order to get forgiveness, right? Now, why is the important, the thing you want to realize is like, why is Job having to get up and sanctify his kids and do what? He had to do what? Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings. What is Job trying to get forgiveness for? He tried to get mercy and grace because he caught his kids doing what? They were, sinning. They, were sinning. they were in the midst of sin, Frank. Celebrating your birthday is self-worship. You're idolizing yourself. Give, hold that. Give me Exodus 20. Give me the law on that. Who, who else are we, person, are we supposed to serve? Anybody else outside of the Lord? Nobody but him, right? So why do our people celebrate birthdays? It is manipulation. Have you ever celebrated your birthday? Be honest, you've never celebrated your birthday. Since I was 18, that was the last time. So since you was 18, how old are you now? So the past 10 years, you never celebrated your birthday? No. All praise, that's a good thing. Do your parents celebrate their birthdays? Nah. They don't? Nah. Watch this. Read that. 
This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Thou, excuse me, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God commanded us, because you mentioned the ten, the ten Commandments over there, right? God commanded us to do what? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God said we shall have no other gods before him. If we're out here celebrating our birthday, what are we putting before him? We putting ourselves before him. How can we put the people he created over the creator? That's idolatry, bro. We getting a cake putting candles on it. That's a problem. Why do we give a damn how old we are? What's the significance? There is no significance. It's self-worship. Hold that real quick. Give me some rock. I think it's 33. This is what I'm telling you, what I'm trying to bring out to you, what God is trying to tell you is the ways of our thinking, we got to get brainwashed, bro. Like, we, we've been manipulated far too long by our oppressors, the so-called white man, our the churches. Like, when we was over there, before we even started dealing with you, what the white man, when he walked past us, what did he say to you? He said, uh... He said, think for yourself. Yeah, think for yourself. Yeah. This is the problem that I had with the comment that the, 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 the Edomite made, right? Uh -huh. As he see your brothers dealing with you, right? Bringing out the commandments of the Lord. He walks past after the damage he's done to our communities and say, make sure you think for yourself. Wake him up! <laughs> Why would he tell you that, Frank? Because you don't believe in God. No, not only because he don't believe in God. But he knows that what we teaching is the truth. That's, That's why he's telling you to think for yourself. Because he know that we about to have one more person over here in purple and gold. They don't want to see that. They hate us out here. I'm going to be honest with you. They don't like seeing us out here. Wake them up. I'm going to be honest. Just like who? Just like Jesus. Because if Jesus was, uh, was preaching a message that everybody loved, he wouldn't have got put to death. That's one thing that Christians don't seem to ever want to realize and recognize is that if God and Christ love everybody, why did they kill him? When have we ever hated a man who loved everybody? I don't even make sense. So Jesus must have been teaching something that ruffled a lot of people's feathers. That's right. Read what you got. It's the book of, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 7. Why doth one day excel another? He's saying, why does one day excel another? Meaning what? What makes this Monday better than this Tuesday? Or what makes this Wednesday better than this Thursday, right? Read on. When as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun, by the knowledge of the Lord they were distinguished. God is the one that distinguished the days, right? He's the one that tells us what to celebrate, what not to celebrate. He's making the distinguishing of the days, meaning what? The reason why the seventh day of the week is special is because God sanctified it as our what? Our Sabbath day. That's very simple, right? So he never told us to celebrate our birthdays. He never told us to celebrate his birthday. Read on. And he altered seasons and feasts. He altered the seasons and the feasts. Like right now, we in, what season are we in right now? Say it again. What season we in? No, no, no. Out of the four seasons, right? Oh, winter. We in the winter time, right? So we know because it's winter time, we know it's, it's, it's December. What high holiday is coming up? The Feast of Dedication. We understand that because of the season that we in. Like your feast of dedication, like your Passover. Read. And hollow them. And some of them have he made ordinary days. Some of them he made ordinary days, like the day you were born. Like the day we was all born. That's an ordinary day. Life and death is very common. We celebrate it because we can't see our future. We want to live it up for the day. YOLO. You only live once. All this other foolishness to anything to justify your wickedness, right? 
being a man of some understanding, we have to realize, like, look, we can't operate on that level. We were not meant to have idol worship out here. These Bamas out here setting up all the trees, all the gifts, all the wraiths, got the uh, all these flags hanging around. We not meant to be bound down to none of these things or worshiping them. Read on. Is that it? Now nah, let's go back. Watch this. Cause like you said earlier, you said that you had prayed to the Lord and that he heard your prayer and that he answered it because he blessed your, your bank account, right? So you can go buy that suit. But what we bring out in Proverbs earlier? Oh, uh, dang, hold on. I got it. Okay. You remember? It was Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 24. Huh? Chapter 20, verse 24. I don't think that was it. Was that one? Yeah, yeah. Can you quote it for me? I'm trying to remember, but... Give me that Proverbs real quick. A man's going Watch this, because you thought that your prayer was being answered to go buy your suit. What we're bringing out is, what I told you earlier was, that's not the case, right? The Lord don't deal in that manner. Like we think, like, oh, we could just pray for two thousand dollars. Lord, I just need you to bless me one time, and you wake up and you got two thousand dollars in your bank account. I know, I know, I know what I'm just saying. That's the way. That's the thinking of our people. It don't work like that. Read what you got. It's the Book of Proverbs, chapter twenty, verse twenty-four. Watch this, Frank. Man's goings are of the Lord. A man's goings is of the Lord, meaning what? You may think, a lot of people think they out here just doing their own thing. They're not. A man's goings is of the Lord. So it was meant for you to come out here today thinking that you're just going to go buy a suit, but in actuality, the Lord sent you by his prophets to hear the word. That's a very heavy thing. Because we were dealing with you for about 30 minutes. And now you're coming over here and you still want to hear the word of God. Look how many people are walking walking back and forth and nobody gives a damn. You got to see the significance in that. That's why I, Wake them up. I got to continue to stress to you, you got to denounce that way of thinking that you had prior to us walking up. Right? You, you're you well beyond that. Make it plain. You're well beyond that. You're not just some average brother. You're not just a, a regular guy. The Lord brought you over here to hear the prophet, so that's what we got to bring it out. That's our job, right? Now, real quick, let's get 1 Corinthians 11 real quick. Watch this. Because you say you don't smoke no more, right? You don't drink no more, right? You eat pork. You don't eat pork. Crab. Lobster. Do you have hatred in your heart? Do you deal with covetousness? Covetousness is when you desire to have something. Not at all. We're going to see. Read that. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who's the head of the man? Who is it? Read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is who? Christ, right? So our head, the so-called... Black, Hispanic, and Native American man, the person we answer to is Christ. Read on. And the head of the woman. And the head of the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American woman is who? Is the man. Is who? The man. Now, I know contrary to popular belief, the Democratic Party, you so-called liberated women, y'all believe that y'all above the black man in America. God says you're not. That's right. God says that you are, must be in subjection unto the man. That's right. Yet, when we come out here to set up camp, Frank, we had a sister right here with her husband, mute and quiet, while she was out here being an evangelist, teaching to the women. That's not how God set up the order. God do not want our women on the front lines. It get dangerous out here. People hate us out here. So why would we want our women out front fighting our battles? We can't roll like that no more, man. We can't That's roll like that. God right. said what? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God showing you what? That they're not the same. They're not one and the same, right? Because I know Catholics believe in the Trinity, if I'm not mistaken. They believe that all of them are, is the same deity. That's, that's not true. God just showed you the difference. Read it again from the top. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now this is the significance, read on. 
Every man praying or prophesying. Are we are we in the midst of prayer or prophesying right now? Yeah. We are. Okay, read. Having his head, excuse me. But having his head covered. Having his head covered, read. Dishonoreth his head. Dishonoreth his head. Who is our head? Read it from the top of verse 3 again. The book of first is who? It's Christ. And, and the reason why we repeat the same things over and over is not to make it seem like you're dumb or you're retarded or nothing like that. We're just trying to make sure you understand what we're saying. Because what we're saying is a lot of information, right? It's knowledge, right? So he said the head, our head is who? So if our head is covered, we doing what? Dishonoreth his head. Who are we dishonoring if we was up here teaching with our hoodies on? So if our head is who? He's right. He's Christ? Yeah, our head is Christ, right? So if our head is covered while we in the midst of praying and prophesying, who are we dishonoring? Christ. Right. So knowing that, knowing that we got to be doers of the law, not just hearers only, what would you do? What would be a sign of repentance for yourself? You not sure? Alright, we're gonna read it from the top and let me just tell you, alright? Read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Bring it out! You got a question? What we need to be doing? Oh, that's a good question, sis. We're gonna read this and I'm gonna answer that question. Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Bring it out. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So right now, sis, we're going over the order that God has set up on the earth, right? So we're just bringing out to our brother Frank right here the order that God set up, right? Read. And it's about to have a law that we're about to bring out. Read it from the top. But I would have you know. But I would have you know, Frank. What's your name, sis? Jackie. 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 Oh, Jackie. I'm about to say, Jackie, Lord. I'm so uh, Jackie, I got you. I'm Daniel, by the way. All right, read that. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who is our head? Christ. Who's the head of the man, Sis Jackie? Christ. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who's the head of the woman, Frank? The man. Who's the head of the woman, Jackie? The man. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is who? The head of Christ is who? So are they one and the same? Cause I know you, you was a, you was a Catholic. Do they think they one and the same, right? Does that say they one and the same? No, right. Everybody has an order, right? So watch this. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying. Guess what? We are in the midst of praying and prophesying right now. We about to prove it. Read that real, real quick. This is the Book of Revelation, chapter nineteen, verse ten. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me. See, so John, John and Revelator fell at Christ's feet to worship him, right? Watch what Christ said. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Read. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. He said, Don't do that. I am thy fellow servant. I'm a servant to you. Read. And of thy brethren. Read. That have the testimony of Jesus. Watch this. Worship God. Read. For the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is what? Is the spirit of prophecy. Are we going over the testimony of Jesus right now? So we're in the midst of prophesying right now to you all. Right? What was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You're leaving me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. <laughs> Didn't have to class yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11. Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Stay with me, y'all. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is who? Christ. Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is who? Man. The man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is who? God. God. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying. AKA, if you're bringing out the testimony of Jesus Christ, right, you're in the midst of prophecy. Every man that's praying or prophesying, read on. Having his head covered. Having his head covered, read. 
Dishonoreth his head. Dishonoreth his head. Who's how, who's our head? Who's the head of the man? Christ, right? So if our heads are covered while the testimony of Jesus Christ is coming out, what are we doing to him? You disobeying him. So what should you do? Repent by doing what? No, no, no. I got it wrong, right? Your head is covered. Yeah, my head is covered. You should uncover your head when prophecy is coming out. Oh, this is right here, my head. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I know it's cold, right? But you see the brothers out here who, who believe on Christ. None of our heads are covered, right? We got to keep the laws. We got to be out here shivering just like everybody else. But you got to take that head off your head if you got the spirit of repentance. All, right, I'll do it. I got you. All praises. You. All praises. So watch this, right? Because the same way the brother had to take his head off, watch this for the sister. Read. Verse 4. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. Frank realized that and said, you know what? I got to take my head off. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, so every woman like Sis Jackie, who is in the midst of praying and prophesying, right? Read. Having her, every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head covered, uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Who's the head of the woman, sis? The man, right? So any, any sister that's doing what? But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, with her head uncovered. So if, like, contrary-wise, if your head was uncovered, which you have a head on, right? Read. Dishonors her head. You will be dishonoring your head, which is the man. Thankfully, your head is covered. Little sis, does she have a hat? No. Well, she do got a hood. If she could put a hood on, that'd be great. Man, that's all praises right there. That's all we used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.